Hata nyumba za mabati zinachoma kanga haraka. Ukiangalia sehemu hizi slums au hizo madirisha mimi mwili kabla nyumba sijatoka. Confano kama hapo muda ngoje usi nyumba zilichomeka 87 asubuhi moja. Two people have been confirmed dead. Various of counties spent their night in the cold following a fire outbreak. No, though residents are suspecting that it could have been started by an electrical fault. They allege are being caused by electricity failures. Narrowly escaped with their lives after an electrical fault caused a fire that gutted down everything. Hii kuguza hata ina ku hii mabati kugusa ya kimbira muzima inaku judi ya ad water electricity and garbage disposal services they are hardly consistent in Nairobi but if you were to chance on where you'd get the most consistent delivery of these services then it would be in neighborhoods like these. But often sitting on the outskirts of the towns and cities are the urban ghettos, jam-packed and under-resourced. This is their way of life. But beyond the extensive prevalence of underlying struggles is yet another story. Almost every square of the street front is occupied by different businesses, food vendors, barber shops and salons, electronic shops, and many others. It's a vibrant economic hub. But for all this effort, there's no denying the difficulties that come with living here. Pipe kipita kama kwa mtaro. Mtu amenda meka kinyesi hapo. Hiyo maji imekuja. Aya, mtaro si inapitisha maji na ile pipe iko ndani, ile kinyesi kwa pale. Hiyo maji of course, the little ambayo itaingia kwa ile pipe inaenda ku cause harm kwa many people wale wanaenda kutumia hiyo maji. Kuna ukame wa maji. So in a come like rationing and the time water inakuja na rationing inakuja na maybe sometimes ni safi, sometimes si safi. Lakini saa hizi mpaka stima ni shida waezi afford kuna wengi hata walikatiwa stima hawaezi afford at all their struggle isn't just one of accessibility but also affordability those two words hit home for many kenyans we need electricity but we can't afford electricity you go to other parts of the city whether they're informal middle class etc still have the same problems with electricity or similar problems with electricity perhaps now it is the overbilling or you know downtime that is unnecessary or or faulty transformers blowing up and you also have issues of of water where everyone is having to buy water you have these bowsers that are making the cartels that are making billions of shillings because water is not being provided on a regular basis. So if you struggle with that in non-informal settlements, you can only imagine what happens in the informal settlements. Unlike the rest of the population, residents of informal settlements also have to pay to access the most basic services. Uh, analipa singi 15 akioga maji baridi ana wengine hata hawataki kuogea hiyo baridi so hawakuji ya baridi mwenye anataka kuoga na ogaga na siringi 10 nyumba mingi hapa hazina cho hazina showers so mimi wanakuja kwangu nimejenga mahali wanakuja wanaogea maji moto pale most of the people here live in small substandard housing structures mostly one room to sharks eh hii kanyumba ni kukaa tu hivyo eh hivyo tu sasa watoto warale chini watoto warale juu murale chini juu kikaa maisha ati weke kitanda iwesi tosea vitanda bili kusuka pili ya elekso 
Hii nalipa elfu tatu. Hmm. Sima nalipa ni ya tatu. Kwa sababu kuwezo ito atuwe, atuna, akuna pawe kuendo kuhisi malipa ingini. Meet Stephen Jogu and Esther Naliaka. Both are residents of Kibera Slum. One lives in Lainisaba, while the other lives in the Soweto area. They don't know each other, but share a lot in common. 345 people have lost their lives in electrocution. That is a scary thing to imagine, but it can and often does get worse. Jogu and Esther know this all too well. The person in question is Njogu's four-year-old daughter. This is where she and her friends used to play. It's also here that she breathed her last. Behind every picture he shows us is a memory of what was a strong further daughter bond. His dreams for her were very big. His was a life filled with possibilities. But on 2nd April 2022, Jogu got a call that anyone would dread ever receiving. Mimi wakati huo nilikuwa nimeenda safari kidogo. Eh nikapata walikuwa na mama yake huko kwa kwa nyumba. Mtoto wakatoka na watoto wakaenda kuche. Anakaenda kucheza kuko nje. Akapatana na watu wenye wameweka machini za maji. Kwa chini ya nini chini ya karibu na muto. Sasa hiyo stima zenye zimewekwa hizo machini zimewekwa kwa, kwa, kwa maji. Wakati hiyo haya mtoto sijui wakati alienda kucheza na wao ile ile mchezo ya kujificha akaenda akashika wa ikamurusa kwa maji ikafanya ikamuua. In what seems like a twisted tragic irony of life, Njogu, a driver by profession, was on his way to Embu transporting a family mourning for a funeral when he received the news of his daughter's demise. Mimi niliambiwa nikiwa na huko eh paka gari yenye nilikuwa naye mimi ilibidi ile tewe derefa mwingine. Ju nilikuwa na basi. Sasa ingeenda, ju sigeendesa. Wakati nilisikia mwili siangu, ju sigekuja na hiyo gari tena. Sasa mlazima mtoto wako sasa unauliza sasa ju unajua kifo sio safari yetu yameenda. Unajua sasa hakuna siku mtakuja muonane na huyo mtoto te? Hata saa hii sasa hata saa hii tunaongea na e, ukipoteza mtoto si sasa pak lazima usikie hofu na usikie uchungu kwa mwili. Hata saa hii saa hii tukiongea si lazima nimkumbuke tu. Nothing prepares us for the loss of a loved one. Whether it was obvious that the time was coming to an end or it was a bolt from the blue. Death, as they say, leaves a heartache no one can heal and love a memory no one can steal. Nobody understands this pain better than Esther. She too has a story. Forty-two. I'm going to Andre or Temba Villela. 
lakini jina ya mtandi alikuwa amechulikana sana tulikuwa anaitwa Roger ama Rusura hiyo This is Andrew or Rogers as he was popularly known here he was Esther's husband Nime ukati nilikuwa nyumbani kwenu je mimi mimi ninatoka Pungoma yeye anatoka Vika Mimi nitoka nyumbani kucha kutafuta kazi huko Nairobi Kati nikuja nitafuta kazi yeye nilipata kazi na kafanya fanya tukapatana na yeye Patana na yeye tulikaa mtu mrefu karibu miaka 2 ndio kwa kuja na kucha kanioa The story fits perfectly into the rural urban migration narrative where many have found themselves settled in these informal settlements while looking for better life for themselves and their families Theirs may have been a tough life but it was one also filled with lots of love and laughter. Musango alikuwa mtu ambaye anapenda story. Mwalimu meka story tu mzuri. Mnacheka, yani kama kama umekasirika, itapita ucheke. Hata kama umekasirika. Na kiingia atakuliza unataka nini? Hata ukisema unataka kitu fulani, atakwambia ah wewe si ni bibi yangu. Mimi hakuna mwenye sababu mwingine. Shika hii. Anakwambia hiyo. Ama leo mnasikia kukula nini? Hata kama ni kuku ataenda laina nuno kuku mkuje mchinje mkule. At the time, Andrew was just showing and expressing his love for his family the best way he could. But little did they know that his words would soon become a reality. And it all started with a fire incident on the 21st of January 2022. It was usiku kitu sa tano. Msango aliingia kutoka nje alikuwa ameenda kutembea njoo wanaume kuingia maleti. Msango huingia akanipisha mlango nikamfungulia. Vile nilimfungulia mlango akaingia na kaitisha mtoto. Nataka kuchukua mtoto nikamwambia mtoto amelala usiamshe mtoto. Yeye msango alisikia na akala akalala. Sasa wakati mtoto aliamka acharibu kumnyonyesha ndio usingizi mbele mbeleke. Kidogo nikaona light ikatokea hapa juu. Hai nikasema ni kwa jirani ile light ni stima ama light gani? Asa kuja light akuje kwa pasha. Kupika pasha kwa angalia ah hii si light ya kawaida. Kuangalia rufi kaanza kukuja. Kambi hapana huko nachomeka mimi nikaambia watoto amka mkimbie muende hii muende nje. Yenyewe watoto kaamka ukimbia ukaenda nje. Kwa hiyo ndo kuenda nje naona tu yenyewe light ikaanza nikaitana huko nyuma. Fulani eva ni enda msime nini? Stima huko nachome huko nachomeka huko mbele. By this time, neighbors were already gathering outside, trying to extinguish the fire. Meanwhile, Esther's husband was still asleep. Mimi kumwaka maji, nadhani maji ilimwakia bariti kamuamsha. Vile ilimwamsha, akatoka nje akasema ngoja kwanza mama Shalini usisime, ngoja kambia hapana. Wewe kimbia uende nje, mimi naoboteki moto isikuje kwe, isikuje huku. Yenye msanga alitoka nje, vijana wengine pia wakatoka kusaidiana kusima moto kwenye kwa jarani yangu hapa. Asa wakati watu wangu walitoka nje walitoka na mtoto bila kitu hata bila kofia. Watu wangu walikuwa wamesita. Bila kofia. Asa nikasema ah wacha ni mwanyi nyinyi imeanza wacha nikirudi ndani nichukue blanketi ya mtoto ya mtoto tufunike mtoto. Yenyewe nikapata mzangu amesema kwa mlanga hapa anaambia wenzake msienda hapo mahali hapo mahali nipate kuna show kuna shock. Esther did not know but those would be the last words she would ever hear from her husband. It would also be the last time she ever saw him alive. Nilikuwa hapa. Mtu moto ilikuwa kwa hiyo kijana huyu charani yangu hapa. Wakati moto ilikuwa imewaka, msangu yeye alitoka kwenda kuzima. Kwenda kuzima, kumaliza moto, kuzima moto alafu kuingia ndani na kapata yeye ajali. In a split second, Esther lost her husband and the children their father to electrocution. Utunyoliona tu life baba akifa ni wawili. Sasa niko na mtoto wa mwenzangu. Na huyu mwenye amekuwa hapa ndio mwangu. Lakini kuna mwingine tena katika kama hiyo mwenzangu ndio waliona babao like happy na hata walipika nduri. Nyinyi happy ni kwa baba yao. That is a trauma nobody should ever have to experience. You know I have heard uh, Kenya Power gaslight uh, and and blame uh, residents of informal settlements when they're electrocuted. Uh, they say, ah, this is because of illegal connections. And you know, of course, that's invariably going to happen. But I also ask the question, what happens in, in rural poor areas where there was the, where, where you have electrocutions happening on a regular basis? So I, I reject the gaslighting uh, by Kenya Power of those who end up in dangerous situations with electricity. 
What happened to Esther and Jogo's families is grievous, but it's also a possible indicator of a failing power provision system. Sahi ya pata ukienda uguze tukichwa tu toe kofia ukue una viatu. Uguze hii mabati kama una viatu. Hii mabati diyo hathi. Uyo mtucharani yangu uyo, ukingia hapa ilikuwa mawaya mingi sana sa stima. Hasa sijui kandi ni ilikucha na moto kali, au tujui ni kandi ilikucha. Lakini ngekua serekari, kitu kama hiyo hinga hapen. Mi nasikiaga vipa sana. Paka nilikuwa nimesikia kuwabia watu. Tuwede kwa hiyo muto yote tutoa hizo machi. Tuzo hizo machi ni zote ziko kwa muto. Waziweke mahali zinafaa. Hata kama ni mahali juu wazijege, mahali kutu, mahali juu. Juu mahali wameziweka. Sitakuja kuleta maafa kabisa. Their stories depict the kind of dangerous lifestyle lived by hundreds of thousands others in Kenya's informal settlements. Cartels do I make the big problem in this community in when it comes in Mambo ya Maji. Mahala na kama kila nyumba iko na stima na simu ya wizi. Na mwogopi vile umesema watu wanaweza umia sio kuchomeka tu pia kufariki nini? Najua ndugu yangu kuna vitu vingine inabidi uishi katika hiyo situation sababu Safety uh, for people living in informal settlements is just such a, you know, such a, uh, an angst, such a difficulty for them. We need to look at why do people um, unlawfully tap these resources? Now, is it because um, we don't have a basic living wage in the country? Is it because um, the levels of inequality are just so high that people at the bottom of the pyramid just don't have the resources to be able to take on that um, uh, responsibility? I think the, the issue should never be on the recipient or the buyer of the illegal electricity. It's as dangerous as gaslighting the electricity consumers. And that's what Kenya Power does to us. They say, ah, you didn't switch off your lights, you left your appliances running, you, 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 what equipment do you have? Every time you say, I have a high electricity bill, the first thing they ask you is, uh, what equipment do you have? Yet your electricity bill looks like you have a factory in one of your rooms. I'm not saying that I'm endorsing illegal actions, but they are not the problem. So, who is the problem? Who is to blame when property is damaged and lives lost due to legal connections? From an accountability perspective, we have to keep going back. I always say, let's go back. Where did this start? Who is aware? Is that Nyumbakumi boss uh, aware that there's uh, illegal connections here? Why is he or she um, uh, allowing this to happen? Then you go back. When there's a raid by, by police, how come certain police officers will, will divert attention from a certain section of the informal settlement and say, Akuna Kitupale, who paid them to turn uh, to, to look the other way. Then you come back, who are the providers of these illegal connections and who are, who are they colluding with? Are they colluding with the same Kenya power? Are they who are they colluding with? In the next episode, we answer these questions and show you the different levels to this illegal business, how the operations are built, run, and some of those behind it. Hi, my name is Joy Kirigia. I am a producer and reporter at African Censored. Thank you for watching this video to this point and for being our number one supporter. We value you. To maintain our independence and continue to bring you in-depth stories, we need your financial support. We are requesting that you become a member of our channel or a Patreon on Patreon right now. The link with the instructions is on the screen and the description below. Alternatively, you can send us an M-Pesa directly using the instructions below. Thank you.